I'm Gaston Primo. Uh, I'm currently doing my PhD at Queen Mary University of London uh, under the supervision of uh, Professor Alvaro Mata and in his lab. The method I'm currently working with is called uh, 3D electrophoresis assisted lithography or also called as 3DL. The main advantage of, of this 3DL is actually this, this huge range of applications because two main things, it's really simple it's really it's cost effective and it's, it's really affordable. The important thing to bear in mind about the 3DL is its components. The different components of the 3DL are the two buffer containers, the capsule in which we will hold the hydrogel, finally the power supply to which we will connect the electrodes, and finally this will close the system and allow us to move our charged proteins or biomolecules into these hydrogels, creating these spatially controlled chemical gradients into soft materials. For start assembling the system, we need to prepare the gel and the gel will be contained in the capsule. But the key component in this setup is the mask. And how we do that is we, we use a semi-permeable membrane to which manually we pour through holes towards the proteins will start migrating and creating these patterns into the hydrogels. Once the membrane is ready, we can move on into the set and the synthesis of the gel. In this case, I'm using a polyacrylamide 3%. So for this, just set the gel and then pour the gel in the capsule avoiding the formation of bubbles. Another key point here is once we put the gel into the capsule, we leave a little meniscus on top of the capsule, which then will allow us to stick the membrane on top of that meniscus. Then with a top, a part that is a cut ependorf, we will clamp the membrane into the uh, bottom part. Another important aspect to bear in mind here is that we need to protect this membrane. This, this membrane is a semi-permeable membrane, it's a dialysis membrane, so it, we cannot allow it to get dry. So for that, we just pour a little bit of our preset hydrogel on top of the, on the membrane, just to protect the membrane. And in this way, we have the whole capsule set. So we have the gel in the bottom, the membrane in the middle with the through holes towards the proteins will start migrating, defining the patterns, and the top gel for protecting this mask. Generally between one hour and a half, two hours, you have to leave the gel setting. After that time, you need to now seat the protein. So for that, I use a holding agarose. It's just uh, agarose 1%. It's the same isotonic conditions as in the gel, so the same um, buffer composition for maintaining the, the, const, the current constant in the system. I dissolve the protein in this agarose and then I pure the protein in, uh, on top of the gel already set into the capsule. And then again, we have to wait for at least 20, 30 minutes to the agarose to set. And once it's set, we are ready to start the patterning process. You can easily recognize and distinguish the two, the two sections or the two areas in which we have the proteins. In this case, we have two proteins of the same molecular weight, but they are take tagged with different fluorescent labels. So for finishing the assembling of the capsule, the main thing is like we need to open the system. It was a capsule to hold the gel while it was in its liquid form, but now we need to open this capsule to make sure that once we put this capsule into the, the setup, into the buffer, buffer containers, the capsule will be in contact. That means the gel will be in contact with both containers. So for this, we just gently cut the bottom of the capsule with the microton blade. And once that is ready, we look for our preset buffer that is uh, trace glycine 1x, and the pH should be between 8.4, 8.6. In this case, it's 8.47. And what we do is with the same buffer, we just wet a little bit the tubing of the buffer containings to help us to grab the capsule in this tubing. And now what we have to do is pure the buffer. I pure half liter of buffer in each container. As we are using an electric field, we need to get rid of any possible leak or any possible loss of electric field. And the way that we're losing this electric field is with air or bubbles. Now we go to close finally the system to start the patterning process. For this, we use two platinum electrodes connected, working as anode and, and cathode. And then we connect the cathode towards the left and the anode towards the right. So in this way, we are sure that the negative charges are migrating in left, right direction. Choose, in this case, the running, the printing that we're going to do, it will be into a con in a constant voltage. So we just set constant voltage as a program, and then we apply the voltage. In this case, we're going to use 200 volts, and then we start the running. Current will be changing. 
So that will tell us that something is happening, but we are not able to see it yet. And that's that we are just pre-concentrating the protein towards the mask. And once all the protein is there, then the proper pattern will start taking place. So in this case, uh, after 15 minutes, we will start seeing a proper patterning of our proteins into this gel. We are creating complex patterns in hydrogels in which we have huge resolution um, in these patterns. We can use a, a wide range of functional molecules and mostly any wide, uh, widely available hydrogel. So basically, what we are trying to do is trying to create more complex tissue engineering in vitro models, either for drug testing or like a basic biology study, and also to create even more complex structures for tissue engineering applications. <laughs>